With the recent release of the Energy Amplifier Initiation event thanks to Update 1.5, there are sure to be a number of new Diona players. Now, considering she is one of my most used units and the first character I have gotten up to level 10 friendship, I figure I should share what I know about the character gameplay wise and why I personally consider her to be the best healer in the game. Hello kings, queens and majesties, welcome to Whalestat, I am Slice of Otaku. With this video, we will be covering the 4 star cryo bow user, Diona, and as per usual, going over her talents, skills, optimal artifacts, weapons and constellations, all of which you can find timestamps for on the video and in the description. First up we have her talents. Diona's normal, charged and plunge attacks are all pretty basic, and exactly what you would expect from a bow user. This is a talent I have absolutely no investment in, because it's typically not what you turn to this character for. Her elemental skill, Icy Paws on the other hand, is something you will be using quite frequently. Diona releases these shards of ice that deal cryo damage, but we don't really care about damage output from her. What we do want is the shield that results from its usage, the damage absorption of which scales based on Diona's max HP. Now there are two ways to use this elemental skill, either press the button or hold the button. But really and truly there is no instance in which you don't hold. With a simple press, Diona fires off two of her icy paws and leaves it at that. If you hold instead, she fires off five icy paws. And mind you, the duration of the shield this skill produces is based on the number of paws that hit their target. So the more the merrier. But it doesn't stop there. Shields formed by holding her skill provide an additional damage absorption bonus of 75% along with a 250% cryo damage absorption. Oh, and she also does a cool backflip that at times can save her from harm's way. This skill beyond being a segue into her amazing elemental burst is so absurdly good because with shielding that's lessening damage before it can even impact your team's health. And so even when Diona isn't acting as a healer, she is still protecting the team and keeping everyone's health up. And in that, for comparison's sake, she isn't dead weight like a Barbara may be for some teams. But again, this is in a lot of ways a segue into her elemental burst, Signature Mix, the source of her role as a healer. With it, Diona creates an AoE of both cryo damage and what is known as Drunken Mist. This mist deals continuous damage to enemies within, but that's not the part we care about as it also heals characters within, with each instance being a percentage of said character's max HP along with some additional points, lasting for a total of 12 seconds across the board. The sheer fact that this is passive healing is so major. Throw this out, switch to your character in need or what have you, and reap the benefits while still being able to maintain a steady stream of damage. A very simple concept for one to grasp would be to protect the healer. And if the healer has no need to be out on the field for extended periods of time, that is to me a job well done. Compare that to 5 star healers such as Chi Chi or Jean who are most capable when out on the field themselves. But then moving to her passive talents, we firstly have complimentary bar food. When perfectly cooking a dish with restorative benefits, there is a 12% chance to obtain double the product. This skill is the very same for Barbara and her sister Jean, so if you have either of these two, you'll already have access to this one. For me, I always use Hu Tao's cooking ability, but before I had her, this skill definitely saw a lot of use. We then have Cat's Tail's secret menu. Characters shielded by icy paws receive a 10% increase to movement speed and a 10% reduction to stamina consumption. An inherently supportive contribution that isn't the craziest thing in the world, but it's nice to have regardless. Something you'll probably see better mileage on when using certain characters as opposed to others. Particularly those who rely more on stamina for the sake of charge attacks and what have you. But then lastly we have Drunkard's Farce, which unlocks at character ascension 4. Enemies that enter the AoE for Elemental Burst receive a 10% reduction to their attack for 15 seconds. This again speaks to Diona's ability as a healer by way of limiting the overall need to heal. The less damage an opponent is capable of dealing out, the less you'll sustain or need to deal with. Now for transparency's sake, I for one, despite Diona being one of my most used units, do not yet possess this skill. I have kept her at level 60 for ages now, which I would recommend to the vast majority of the player base when it comes to support units simply because the current state of the game is so DPS reliant. In most cases, you can get away with having lower level supports so long as your main DPS is built in their stead. 
Perhaps at higher levels she becomes that much better of a healer, but I for one have yet to encounter such absurd levels of enemy damage that I could possibly warrant that sort of investment. And again, to be honest with you, even when messing with the higher levels of play, you don't really have to worry about leveling her artifacts either. She's already so good with just a bit of skill investment. And for as amazing as her shielding is, there are other characters who of course do that better because that is their bread and butter. What you want from Diona is a healer and so you're going to want to prioritize her elemental burst. But that's enough for her skills, let's move on to her constellations. In regards to constellations with Diona being a 4 star unit and even being given away for free currently, the likelihood of procuring her various levels of constellations over the course of the game is pretty good. At C1 we have a lingering flavor. When the effects of Diona's elemental burst conclude, she then immediately regenerates 15 energy. This is absurdly good as it lessens the wait time for her healing quite a lot. We want her healing to be as reliable as possible and available when needed and this goes a long way towards that pursuit. This is an amazing stopping point. At Constellation 2 we have Shaken Not Purred. The damage of Diona's elemental skill is increased by 15%, which we don't care about, but thankfully it also increases the damage absorption of her shields by 15%, and we'll gladly take all that we can get. Furthermore, this constellation makes her an amazing co-op healer as well, as when her elemental skill hits a target, a shield is made for nearby characters on the field as well. Now mind you, this is a lesser version of her shield, as it possesses half the damage absorption capabilities her shield normally has, and only lasts for 5 seconds, but regardless, it's a benefit nevertheless. Perhaps not as reliable as say a Geo shield character, but it's something. Constellation 3 is, as usual, a level increase to her elemental skill. But this is actually one of those instances where Con 3 is better than Con 4 because at Constellation 4, we have Wine Industry Slayer, which is completely useless. When within the AoE for Elemental Burst, the charge time for Diona's aimed shots are reduced by 60%. And if you are using this character to her utmost potential, you will never have use for this constellation. Remember, the biggest benefit to Diona's healing is the passivity of it all. You don't want her out and about, and more than that, you don't want her for damage. Perhaps if this constellation benefited the charge time for bow users across the board, it could be insane when paired with a character like Ganyu, but as is, it is a waste. And so if you're not aiming for constellation 6, even if you love the character, going past C1 isn't exactly worthwhile. But speaking of her C6, we have Cat's Tail Closing Time. Characters within Diona's Elemental Burst AoE will receive a 30% incoming healing bonus when their health falls below or is equal to 50%. And if their health is above half, Elemental Mastery is increased by 200. This is what you want from a Constellation 6. The healing becomes more intense when you really, really need it, and if you're good or cap out, you'll still benefit as again, you can have your DPS go to work from here. Not to mention the continuous AoE cryo damage produced by this field, albeit negligible by its lonesome, can lead to some crazy elemental reactions. Reactionary damage only furthered by your now increased elemental mastery. With constellations being done, let's move on to Diona's best weapons. So in regards to weaponry, Diona has for me two optimal options along with one desperate pick. First up we have the Favonius Warbow, a 4 star obtained by way of the Gacha. And the substat for this weapon is Energy Recharge. Crits with this weapon have at base a 60% chance to generate 6 energy for the wielder once every 12 seconds. This is pretty good. If you find yourself with a high crit rate on your Diona, you can stand to make this that much more reliable. However, to make the most out of this character, we won't really want crit rate on our artifacts and won't be attacking with her nearly enough to warrant such an investment. And again, you can get away with it. You can get away with having crit rate and what have you. It won't be entirely optimal perhaps, but you really don't need to put too much investment in her artifacts just because at base, again, she is so capable as a healer. And with that in mind, my weapon of choice for Diona is the Sacrificial Bow. It, like the aforementioned Favonius War Bow, is a 4 star obtainable through the gacha with a substat of energy recharge. Its signature skill, Composed, is as follows. After dealing damage to an opponent with an elemental skill, that skill has at base a 40% chance to end its own cooldown once every 30 seconds. And let me say, the satisfaction of Diona hitting that backflip twice in a row is like no other. 
If you have this weapon and the character at Constellation 1, you will more than likely have your elemental burst at the ready more often than not. Because of my will tendencies, I've gotten this thing up to refinement 5 unintentionally, and at 80% likelihood of a proc every 16 seconds, I find myself surprised when it doesn't go off. But hey, with that energy recharge substat, I'll have another chance to do so very quickly. And if it wasn't clear, the purpose of all this is to get your burst up and ready to go as soon as possible. Now, if you don't have access to either of these weapons, you'll want to go for the three star recurve bow. Its skill, called the weak, restores 8% health at base upon the defeat of an enemy, which we certainly don't care about all things considered, but it does have the subset of additional HP percentage, so that's good for Diona's shield capabilities. So now that we have our weapons of choice, let us move on to her best artifacts. Diona has to me two standout artifact sets, 4 Piece Maiden Beloved and 4 Piece Noblesse Oblige. Ultimately, your choice between the two comes down to what your particular team needs more of. The 2 piece benefit of Noblesse is pretty useless to us, but the 4 piece benefit serves to provide a 20% attack bonus for 12 seconds with the use of her elemental burst, which is the source of her healing. Because Iona is off the field so often, buffing your damage dealers can be a pretty sound option. But do keep in mind that if said damage dealers also make use of this set as a 4 piece, that 20% attack bonus does not stack. As for Maiden Beloved, the 2 piece benefit provides a 15% bonus to healing effectiveness, which is fantastic for very obvious reasons. And the 4 piece benefit makes it so that healing received by all party members goes up by 20% for 10 seconds with the use of an elemental skill or burst, which is all we use Diona for. There honestly isn't a time where I don't run Maiden Beloved on this character because of just how good it is for healing. But with Genshin Impact being such a DPS race and the fact that you can't heal beyond full, I can understand why someone may opt for Noblies instead. For her Sands, you'll want Energy Recharge to get your kit moving and stay that way. For her Cup, because we don't care about damage, as opposed to going for Cryo Damage bonus, I go for HP for better shields. For her Crown, you'll want a Healing bonus. For her substats, energy recharge and HP percentage take precedence, with elemental mastery being nice since everything she does involves cryo. And now that your Diona is set up properly, we can move on to some team comps. So when it comes to team compositions, Diona as a healer and one that largely stays out of the way can fit well into just about any composition. I like her paired with a sub DPS Shing Shou for the sake of freeze, then for main DPS, pretty much any pyro character outside of Amber will be ridiculous on account of Melt and the simple fact that pyro is the best DPS element in the game currently. Now I for one use Hu Tao a whole lot, but admittedly Diona can be such a good healer at times that she conflicts with Hu Tao's damage output with it scaling off of low HP. But Hu Tao does love a good shield, so it's a give and take. You just have to be a bit more cautious. The recently released Yenfei, a new favorite of mine, despite doing crazy numbers for her damage, is a bit on the squishy side when it comes to HP, so that added cushion is a big help. And if you have Yenfei at Constellation 4, you're looking at a pseudo shield team. And at that, I'd like to try out a Xing Yan team with her at some point for this very reasoning. But whatever the case, hopefully you are able to recognize Dayona to be one of, if not the best healer in the game. Bennett is insane, don't get me wrong, but from a purely healing standpoint for me, none can compare to the kitty bartender that is Diona. If you have made it this far into the video, we would love to further the discussion in the comments, so let us know what you think. So many of you left us with such kind words with the last character guide, and so you can definitely expect more where that came from because this is so much fun for me. And if you enjoyed the video, please drop us a like to let YouTube know that this is content worth sharing. And if you haven't already, subscribe to WhaleStat with notifications on, as we intend to bring you plenty more Genshin Impact content from here on out. I have been your host, Slice of Otaku. Thank you all so much for watching and have an awesome day. I love you.